At the beginning of this unit, students addressed the need for computers to have numeric addresses in order for messages to be routed properly to the destination. But when humans open a web browser and want to request web page data from a computer, we fortunately don't have to know or remember the numeric IP addresses for the server. We can just type in www.code.org and our computer is somehow able to request the data from the right computer. In this and the following lesson, students will learn about the domain name system, or DNS, a hierarchical system and protocol that maps human readable domain names, such as code.org, to the actual IP address of the computer serving the web page. DNS is considered hierarchical because not all domain name servers in the system need to know about every single mapping from domain name to IP address. For example, there are certain servers that are responsible for the .org domain, which know about the DNS servers responsible for the subdomains under it. This lesson primarily addresses concepts that fall under the CSP big idea of the internet. The getting started activity for this lesson is a bit more involved than usual and has you and your students up and moving around. Here's your worksheet for today and here's your IP address. As your students walk in, hand them each one of the IP address cutouts and instruct them not to share the number with anyone else. To kick off the activity, let students know that their task is to get a complete mapping of everyone in the class's name with their IP address. Everybody grab a pen or a pencil and um, you, we're gonna, you're gonna walk and talk to each other and you're, you each have an IP address. Your job is to figure out everybody else's IP address in the room. So you can write down their name and the IP address on their sheet. Now you can talk to each other one at a time and when you do, you can exchange as much information as you want. So if one of you already knows somebody else's, you can exchange a whole bunch of them. Uh, but you can only talk to one person at a time. All right, ready? Go for it. I have an IP address of 205.22. During the activity, you will be covertly tapping the students on the shoulder one by one, taking their current IP address and giving them a new one. Yeah, never mind. This will cause their mappings to quickly become out of date and it will be difficult to get the latest information. But I just gave it to like six people. That, sorry, it changes, they change. Here's the new one. It may not take long for students to get the point of the activity and reach an appropriate level of frustration. Once that happens, bring the class together for a quick discussion. The important points to draw out of the conversation are that, number one, IP addresses change all the time. As your phone moves around with you, you are constantly connecting to different routers and therefore getting a new IP address. Even servers serving up web pages like code.org can change IP addresses if its internet service provider changes. Number two, having a centralized mapping for host names to IP addresses is better and more efficient design than having everyone keep a local mapping, which can become out of date quickly. Having experienced firsthand the pain of not having a centralized system, students will be well prepared to watch the DNS section of the IP DNS video. To plug in the unplugged warm-up activity, direct students to the internet simulator for the lesson in pairs, but have pairs split up across the room so they can't talk to each other in person. So you should see your partner and a, D a yellow DNS node. Although pairs will be connected to the same router, in this version of the tool, students won't be able to see the IP addresses of their partner. So you're here, you're Monica3, and you want to send a message to Brad4, but you don't know his IP address. So Which is, that's there, right, right there. Right, it's question mark, we don't know it yet. Okay. But you do know the IP address of the DNS. Okay. So what we're going to do is send a message to DNS, and we're going to find out from DNS what his address is. The DNS server in the simulator responds to requests formatted with a very specific protocol. So you have to put get and then the host name and host name is going to be Brad's address. Oh, Brad. Is it Brad4? Brad4, yep. It's get and then a space and then the host name of the person. And if you look in the router diagram over here, you can see the host name is Maddie 9 The server will respond to the IP with the IP address of the host name requested which students can use to communicate with their partner to fill out a basic questionnaire. It understood you, so it told you Brad's address is 2.13. Okay. So now you can send a message directly to Brad using that address. However, just like in the activity, IP addresses are not forever. If I come around and tap you on the shoulder, I need you to disconnect from your router and then connect back to it. So I, uh, I noticed that she left and came back, 
So um, when I tried to send a message, she didn't respond, and I went and asked the DNS again. And the DNS came back, and she had a different address than she had before. OK, great. Aside from getting to experience a basic DNS request and response, this activity is meaningful because it will be the first time that students actually have to follow a protocol precisely. This is because there is actually a computer responding to the requests that only understands certain commands. 